Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're up to part 10 on our Hocus Pocus project. And in this one, we're going to be finishing up Witch Winifred. We're going to work on her cape. Actually, actually made her cape off camera. But we're going to be working on her over robe and the details to that. And some eyelashes at the end. <laughs> My worst nightmare. All right, so we're working on Winifred here in the middle. And uh, we're going to be most, mostly working on this over robe, doing these uh, gold decorations. I did already make her cape <coughs> off camera because I've made this same cape in the last two witch videos. Uh, the, the other two witches, I made their cape exactly the same way with the collar and the hood. So um, <coughs> I'm not really going to focus on that for this video. I was just taking up time for something we've already done. Uh, but you do see that the that part that I rolled under did help to flatten out those bottom uh, that bottom hem of the front there, so that it's laying more flat. So I'm gonna have to put on my glasses here so I can see up close, and I'm gonna use some gold, purple, and light green metallic paints. Uh, you've seen me use this gold plenty of times. It's my favorite. Uh, it's called Golden. You can order it from Amazon. And uh, the others are called Deco Art Metallics, Metallic Acrylic Paint. And I'm just using a purple and a light green of those colors. Um, just to try to give some dimension to the gold designs. So my idea of the designs are that they're going to be sort of magical runes. Uh, R-U-N-E-S. Runes. Runes. However you say that. And... No particular design, just really some, you know, circulars, some triangles, some uh, straight things, just to give it some look of some magical handwriting or designs or something like that that she might have had on her robe. Uh, there, I actually see two different robes when I look at her pictures. If you like Google her, you see this one where she's just got these gold uh, designs down the edge of the robe and then you, there's another one that's sort of like the picture that I showed you where it looks like she actually has a design in the whole fabric uh, not just around the edges I'm not sure how that happened because I think the one she wore throughout the movie was the one like this where it just has the gold trim around the edges and I think I'm gonna have to go back and watch the movie again oh me I thought I had this sort of all figured out I should have took pictures of the screen or something yeah, so see, I'm just doing like little designs, and then I'm going to put some purple in the middle of that one. Um, I don't know. That doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> I don't really know anything about witch runes anyway. So um, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, whatever you do here, just to sort of vary the type of design so you don't have them all in the same, in the row, the same, uh, you know, do some straights, some triangles. Things like that. And this little brush I'm using is like a brush that you can use with model painting for a little fine detail. I like it because it's got a really stiff brush. And when you're painting on velvet like this, you have to sometimes sort of stipple it because of the direction of the fibers. It doesn't actually go in the way that you're painting. So you kind of have to dab it on in a stippling motion more. So this brush although very cheap, works really well for that because it's stiff and uh, doesn't fray out like a lot of uh, paint, regular paint brushes do. I did have a problem at one point. I pulled the, the uh, brush part out of the plastic and I had to glue it back in, but it's nice. It all stayed together, so that was kind of cool. So just uh, going to continue to make these gold designs up all the way to the where the collar joins the neckline and then I'm going to do it around to the, the front and then around to the sides part, part of the way to the back. The back part as best I can remember it either had like dragons or snakes kind of crossing over on the back you know it comes down in that point and so they were kind of the focal point of the back I uh, can't remember that either <laughs> exactly, but we're going to do something reminiscent of that. So off camera, I completed doing these. You can see where I've uh, added some of the purple and that light green just touches here and there. 
also did the similar designs around the sleeve edge so that it would look like the edges of the coat but in a smaller detail and then I came around this far about three-fourths of the way on the back and uh, this is where I'm going to do that snake slash dragon what's that a drake <laughs> drake snaggon snaggle um anyway i get confused sometimes so <laughs> we're gonna do these designs on the back to give it uh, some more design work and make it look a little bit more witchy or mystical or whatever and so we have the two uh snaggle drakes crossing their heads over pointing outward and we'll just uh, try to draw them in such a way that they could be, you know, sort of a snake dragon. And uh, give them a little bit of color. So you can see I'm just outlining here where I want them to be. And when I get to the edge, I'm just making sort of a curved, I mean, to the end of the snake, I put this curve there to sort of set it off from the designs that are coming around. And the head part, I kind of do that more of a solid gold and I have them with their mouths open. And then uh, I'm going to add some curly cues and things because I think that the back of her coat did have some sort of designs like this on it. But I'm making up my own. Put a little diamond or flame shape up at the top. So there you can see sort of the outline of where we are. I'm going to do some scale designs on the uh, body of my little beasts, and that'll give them more of that dragony, snaky look. And uh, I don't know that I mentioned this in the beginning, but I have been gone for two weeks. I uh, went on a little short camping vacation down to a place called My Mayaka State Mayaka River State Park in Florida. It's near Venice, Florida, and it's a really, really nice park if you get a chance to go there. It's actually the second largest ecosystem in North America. So lots of different plants, flowers, different animals. We saw alligators, wild boars, um, eagles, osprey, uh, you name it. We saw so many, so many different things, and uh, they have a boat ride out on the lake you can take. Uh, they say next year they're going to be adding horses, so you'll have horseback riding. It's a really big park, and it's a really nice park. Uh, so there you can see those sort of scale designs I'm going to use on the body. I'm just going to continue those on down on both sides. And we're going to speed up the tape just a little bit, so it's not so completely boring. But anyway, yeah, the state park was great, and uh, we did get to... Uh, it, experience the love bug swarm which happens the first of may every year apparently and these little love bugs are little black bugs that the male and females hind ends get stuck together for about three days and they kind of float around in a cloud and they get all over your windshield and your cars and they're really hard to get off i mean you can hardly see it's like rain bugs coming down so that was certainly a different experience so if you're in southern Florida around the 1st of May, you want to watch out for that. Mm, that was something. Oh, the other cool thing was uh, South, well, Venice Beach too, but also Caspersian Beach where we went, south of Venice. They're known for shark's teeth. You can find a ton of shark's teeth. Uh, we found like 42 in a, just a couple of hours shifting through the sand and the rocks there at the edge of the water. Apparently there was uh, some sort of... Uh, uh, fossilized structure that's under that area that sort of collapsed I don't know thousands or millions of years ago and uh, all the shark's teeth that were in it have sort of floated up and mixed with the sand so they're really easy to find and there's tons of people down there looking for them so if you're ever in that area and you want a shark's tooth that's where you go I made my husband a shark's tooth necklace out of one of them it was pretty big so kind of cool uh, anyway, right now I'm just putting some of that light green into those diamond shapes. Uh, kind of gives it a little bit of a jewel-like look since it's a metallic paint. That's kind of a, a neat look for this. And also I'm taking that purple and putting some purple dots and designs, even uh, some in those scales to give it a more iridescent look. 
And I really like how that back turned out. Makes me want one of these robes even more. I think it's really cool. Love that point in the back too. Really, really something nice. So I'm really happy with how this over rope turned out. And uh, actually the whole costume. So I'm going to let that dry. The next thing we're going to work on is her hair. <laughs> Remember I had it all uh, smooshed up under that paper towel so we could work on her. So uh, what we basically need to do is do these kind of two blobs on either side of her head. And uh, it's kind of pulled back in the front. So I think for us to be able to mold it the way we want, we're going to have to separate these curls into smaller strands. That's going to make it a little bit easier for us to bunch it up and get it to mold into the shape that we want. So I'm just going to go around the head here and separate the strands out into smaller pieces. And my idea of how to do this will be that I'm going to use needle and thread to kind of sew it into position. Yeah, that's that's my idea anyway. We'll see how that works. Uh, I've already got that front part pulled back. If you remember when we first put the hair on the doll, I sort of just glued it down in the front and then made that sharp widow's peak so that it looks like it's pulled back from the hairline. And uh, so we wanna kind of pull it back a little bit more using the needle and thread and then we'll shape it into those two bunches on either side. Okay, so we got it all fluffed. It's all fluffed out now. And um, what I want to do is kind of anchor the thread over on one side of her head and then kind of sew across going in and out of the hair to hold it down till I get to the other side and I'll anchor it over there. And then hopefully that'll help. That'll help hold it down. So we don't have, uh, you know, miniature bobby pins. The smallest bob pins I have are one inch, and they're still too big to try to make this hair do work. So I'm going into a place here where the hair is glued down, and I can anchor my hair, my uh, thread at that area, and then I'll be able to pull on it and uh, be able to just kind of go in and out of the hair and use it sort of like a headband in a way. I guess is a good way to describe it, and that hopefully we'll pull it back. I did find out one side of her head there I needed a little more hair glued down so I'm going to pull a strand of that out of what I'm trying to pull up. I'm going to end up cutting that in a minute but for right now I'm just trying to figure out how much I need to pull out and how much I need to pull up. Uh, that's my dogs going crazy because we're getting to, ready to have a storm here and they don't like to hear the the thunder so they're barking at it so here we go I'm kind of just going in and out in and out uh, back from the forehead because I want to be able to pull the curls over this so you can do this as many times as you need to to get it to lay down for you I probably went back and forth maybe th three times I guess and just keep pulling it and going back and forth you want to try to use thread as close to the color of the hair as you can. And I think you could do this even if you were using, say, yarn for the hair, which I think you're doing, Dorothy. Um, you could still, you know, sew it back with this as long as you, you're able to pull the curls over it. You know, you won't be able to see it. You could do that. Yeah, I think you could do this hair to hair with alpaca fiber too, but the the mohair that I'm using is a, a little stiffer, so I think it's going to be easier to get it into those fluffed out mounds than alpaca fiber, which is a little bit finer and softer. You could put enough spray on it, you could probably get it stiffer, but uh, I already had this, like I said, and it's great color for Witch Winifred. So now I'm just going back over that front. You can see my technique there, just going in and out and then pulling it tight. Trying to tame this crazy wild hair. And that's working pretty good. You can see it's holding the hair back. 
and then we'll be able to use the thread to shape the mounds and the way I'm, I'm going to do that is basically here's the theory if you want an area to go down so you need it to be mushed down then you're going to sew over that area an area you don't want that you want to be higher you're not going to sew over that area does that make sense i hope so so there's that strand i had to pull out on the side because i needed some more to cover the side of her face so what i'm going to do is cut that now to get it out of the way and cut it longer than i need because you know that's my theory always cut it longer than you think you need because you can't make it longer but you can make it shorter and then I'm going to put some glue under that, let that dry, and then I'll trim off the excess. It's going to be, you know, too long the way it is now. So I just put the glue up, up at the top part, and then press it down. I'm not putting the glue all the way down to get a little glob there. So I'm going to get that off. And then I'll just press the hair down and hold it till it's pretty much dry. And then I'll be able to cut it. There you see I cut it to match the other part above it. And that covers up the area that I needed covered up. And the rest I'm just pulling that hair up, kind of looping it from the side. And because this hair is so th thick and stiff, sometimes it doesn't really want to do what you want it to do. So you may have to use some heat on it. And I, I did do that. I'll show you in a minute. I used my little iron. A little craft iron to try to help smoosh that down a little bit more. I'm trying to do it also with the needle and thread, but when it's really difficult, it's going to pull out from under the thread. Like if it's really not holding it down, then you may need to to use some heat on it. So I keep trying to pull this up so I can sew it and it just is like, no, I'm not going to do what you want. <laughs> I tried. I just kept sewing it. But it was really being ornery. Maybe there was a little magic in it. I don't know. Uh, so I hope you guys are making some dolls too and joining in all this fun. But uh, I have actually really enjoyed this this series a lot. So different things that we did that, that were kind of interesting, like molding the face. So yeah, I'm going to have to turn on my little iron here. and Like this is wool, you know, the uh, mohair is wool, so you can use a, a hot iron on it. It's not going to hurt it. And then if I can press those sides down a little bit, it's going to help me. Just make sure you keep it on the hair and don't hit the face so it won't melt the plastic of the face. The, the hair is fine. It's not going to hurt that at all. So I did that kind of on both sides, trying to press that down a little bit more, and it helped. And then when I sewed it, it wasn't quite so hard to hold it up. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> oh, the series. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, just the fun of remembering the movie, too, because it was just such a campy movie. And uh, I even found a black cat. I'll show you in the end. I have a picture. I found a black plastic cat that's going to be, uh, what was the guy's name? I can't, now I can't remember the guy's name. They turned into the black cat. Thomas? Was it Thomas? I can't remember. I'll have to look that up. Or one of you will know. You can put it in the comments for me. Um, and, uh. So I also found a black cauldron that we're going to use. So, you know, after we finish all the dolls, I want to do some posing of them. And, you know, I think that would be a lot of fun because, you know, put a lot of work into doing some of this stuff like these dolls. And then, okay, they're done, you know, and whatever. Either sometimes I sell them on eBay, Etsy or, you know, or I keep them depending on what they are and if, you know, I'm emotionally attached to them <laughs> or not. But, uh, yeah, we're going to do some fun stuff. So, anyway, I pretty much got this this done. And now I'm just going to take a 
my scissors and trim up around the edge of some of the small hairs that are sticking out. These are just like single hairs that are just wild hairs sticking out. I just want to get them out of the way. You can also use some hairspray on this to help press them down and hold the areas in place. But this is our girl, and I think that turned out pretty cool. really like that. So let's, let's put her cape on her that I made off of the video. We just have a little hook. I did use a green wire on this one instead of the other two. I used like a burgundy wire. But this one to match the coat, the cloak, I put a green hook and eye, and she has her hood in the back and the collar as well. I hate that though because it covers up the back, and that back is the best part where those um, dragon snakes are. Also, I'm thinking about putting a little tack on this sleeve to hold it up so you can see the really cool spider web sleeve underneath you know I could also bend it I guess but I'm thinking about sort of gathering it up there at the elbow because that's a nice touch of the doll and kind of want to have that more visible you can see it on the character in the movie when she raises her arms because her sleeves fall back but of course this velvet you know on smaller dolls it doesn't do that just not enough drapiness and gravity to do that but as I said I that's the back there covered up by the cape, the plain cape. <laughs> oh well, we'll have to just move it around when we want to see it. So this is Winifred pretty much. Um, I'm really happy with how she, I am really happy with how she turned out. So now I'm um, going to put eyelashes on all the dolls. I have a variety to show you. These are some eyelashes I get when I order things from China. They always throw in back eyelashes. I don't know why. And then also this is AOA. I don't know if you've discovered Miss A. Shop Miss A online. Everything there is a dollar. So like these two eyelashes here, they're a dollar. You can also get makeup for a dollar. And the, the bigger packs are like four dollars. It's a great deal. And they're really nice eyelashes. I use them more for my Blythe dolls and uh, some of my bigger dolls. But I'm going to use these cheaper giveaway eyelashes on these dolls. They do have a little bit thicker, uh, I guess where the hair is attached to it, the little, the little wire, or it's almost like a filament that goes around there. But um, I think they'll work fine. And I just always try to pull that goopy glue off that sticks it to the plastic container. That's what I'm doing here. I speeded it up. And then I'm going to measure her eye and cut it so that it fits on this particular eye. And I'll cut another piece exactly the same size on the other side. I'm going to go kind of slow working on Sarah. I'll speed up on the other two, but some of you have asked to see in more detail about putting on eyelashes the way that I do it, which is to glue one side wait for that to dry and then do the other because I just can't do it all in one time. It just doesn't work for me. I, I guess because they're curved and everything. I'm just using Mod, Mod Podge. You can use any kind of glue uh, like this, like Elmer's. This is just a white glue. I'm going to put a little dab here on this piece of aluminum foil and I'm going to use my pointy tool. And what I do is put a little dab of the glue on the inside area where the edge of the eyelash will be on this side. Like that. Just a little dab will do you. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Because the secret here is <laughs> if you have patience, which I don't. Oh, and the other thing I want to show you, like I'm trying to do this with my hand on this side. It doesn't work good. You have to come over on the other side just because of the way the face is curved and just put that glue down. You don't have to worry too much about if you get it outside the line. It's going to dry clear. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Even if it gets on the eyeball, it's going to dry clear. So don't worry. So the secret. Okay. The secret is <laughs> to try to have patience to let it dry some. And I even put a little dab on the part of the eyelash that's going to 
attached to that area. So just on the one side of the eyelash. So if you let these dry a little bit and get just a little bit tacky, they're going to stick so much easier. Now, I didn't wait as long as I should have for Sarah. And you'll see how it falls over, like this first lash. Uh, of course, you didn't see me drop the lash three or four times, which is why I hate to. I don't know why I have to drop the lashes on the floor. Anyway, so what I do is try to attach it in the direction that I want it to go. And this is the part I hate where it's like falls over, comes off, you know, all the things that happen. But if you watch when I do Mary, it, it worked the way it's supposed to, which is it just like sticks together. And that's all you have to do. And then you just let that part dry so you've got an anchor. And that makes it easier for you to glue the outside edge, which curves around. Okay? This is how I do it. And if I'm patient and I wait until it gets tacky, it works really well. If I try to do it too soon and the glue is still too wet, it doesn't work very good at all. And I've tried doing this with E6000. I don't think it works as well. But part of it is, for some reason, when I start doing stuff like this, like my hands shake. I don't know. That's kind of weird. Or I just, like, jerk or something. And then I, and then I pull, pull the eyelash off when I jerk. All right, so this one actually, it worked pretty good. I did not wait as long as I should have. But you can see the eyelash is sort of going up at an angle. That's fine. That's because the edge is glued in the direction that it needs to be glued. And then when we glue out down the outer edge, it'll curve around. Okay? So now Mary's worked the way it's supposed to. So I put the glue down, did the little globs, and I did let it dry some before I tried to put the eyelash on. And I put, you know, some glue on the edges of the eyelash as well. You don't need a whole, whole lot. And then when you stick them together, it's almost like a magnet. You know, it just sort of goes plop and works. Plop. There it goes. See? Perfect. Now, if I will stop messing with it, <laughs> it'll be fine. That's the other thing I do. Like, I get on there like, well, maybe it should be just a little bit. Uh, and then I move it and it pulls it off. All right, so that's the way it's supposed to work right there. See, stop messing with it, Lara. <laughs> All right, stop. Okay. All right, so we're going to do uh, Witch Winifred next. And hers went pretty well. The style of the eyelashes I used on her, just a little different, more spiky looking. But that probably went with her personality. <laughs> She's a little bit evil. All right. So we let them dry. And then with our shaky hand, we stick it in there and we try really hard not to mess with it. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are like that, but I mess up so much going back when it, I just, just leave it alone. Oh, look, dropped it. All right, so just stick it on there and stop. <laughs> All right, so now they've dried. I uh, apparently lost the part of the video where I showed it coming around to glue it on the other side. But basically, you do it's the same technique. You just put the dots of glue on the skin and on the lashes, let it dry from it, and then press them together. And then you can go back and snip off the excess because these are of course too long for the doll and I do try to cut it closer to the I mean I just shorter near the nose like on the corner of the eye and then let it be longer on the outside of the eye yep same thing with Mary we're gonna snip hers off I think the longer they are, the more glamorous the look. So, you know, if you got a doll that's not so glamorous, maybe a little bit shorter eyelashes. And there's Mary. And we're going to trim up 
Bette Midler here too while we're at it. So snip, snip, snip. And I like the spiky look on her. Yeah. Get rid of some of those little trimmed hairs. <laughs> they tend to get everywhere. Just blow. It usually helps. And that ended up looking really nice. All right, so I did this picture where it shows them in the picture and then in the poses similar, just to show you. <laughs> Those little are kind of cute, aren't they? I like them. I think they turned out really good. Yay. All right, then I took away the that photograph and here's them in their poses from the picture, but the full full length view. So you can get a better look at them. And then one at a time, here's a closer look at Sarah. And then we'll look closer at Mary. And then the queen bee herself, Witch Winifred. <laughs> oh, yay, they turned out so cool. I did find some boots for each of them too that were already made, some monster out black boots, so that's cool. I'm gonna show you more about uh, their costumes in another video. And uh, oh, there's the black cat down in the front too. Remind me what his name is, I can't remember his name. So, what's next? Well, we're not through with Hocus Pocus, my friends. No, we are going to do Zombie Billy next, yes. And then we're going to have some fun posing them all in different poses with Billy and alone. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. I don't want you to miss a thing in this fun project.